All right, so you can see this is tmdb.com. You can see the uh, overview in front of you, but we're just going to give our own. Uh, why don't we start with you, Jeremy? You can kind of give a rundown of how you got into the series and all that stuff. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist was a show. I don't know how I came across it. I watched the 2003 Full Metal Alchemist. Probably in like 2005, 2006, somewhere in there. And I loved it. When I, w when I was reviewing, watching episode one and two of Brotherhood, which is the one we're covering now, just for comparison, I went back and I watched the first two episodes. And there are anime I watched this year that I don't remember as well as I remember my 2005, 2006 viewing of the f original Full Metal Alchemist series. I mean, even the one that's not as highly rated still holds up. It's just, it's a great story. Two brothers uh, doing something real smart and real dumb. And uh, you follow a heart-wrenching, uh, pretty dark adventure. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be dark so far. But for episode one, I kind of felt like I wasn't going to like it at first because... Mm -hmm. There's a lot. It's it's very 2000s in terms of. So the art is excellent. Get that out of the way. The action scenes, all that stuff. There's a lot of action in the first uh, first episode. Very yeah. good. Love it. But <laughs> when we're having a battle and they have to tell you 15 times that the little guy is the little one, even though he's the mm -hmm. older brother. And he's upset <laughs> that he's the little one, even though he's the older brother, as well as his name is the Full Metal Alchemist. You get it? I'm like, oh, my God. I, like, the guy I, that's fully metal isn't the Full Metal Alchemist? Yeah. It's this, smart, it's this shrimp guy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does not let up. That is, the uh, yeah. the thing that holds it back is probably the the comedy breaks down to... Everyone's surprised a short guy is a legendary full metal alchemist. Mm -hmm. And um, women like to hit men uh, with a pipe wrench. <laughs> and um, Edward is mad that he's short. Those are the three jokes. They will be beaten into the ground like a, like you're trying to sink uh, supports for a bridge into a river near a large city. Yeah. And uh, who's the the like taller muscular guy that that's with them who tries to block the ice wall in this one. Is it like, I can't remember his name is like Mustang or something. Uh, Mustang is the fire guy. I am blanking on the name of muscles. Mick, uh, Mick mustache. Yeah. That, that dude, he, he's the voice. He's the English voice actor is all might Vegeta Piccolo. It's Chris Sabat. I love that guy. Yeah, he he is a he's what he is one of the larger uh, side characters. He can question suspects by flexing, <laughs> <laughs> and when someone's having a bad day, he takes off his shirt and shows them the muscles handed down for generations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really did enjoy this first episode, but. Some of the dialogue you just kind of got to get past. There, there was one point where, like, after 15 times of them telling me that they're the Elric brothers, they had to make sure they said it one more time. After me, Elric brothers. They're, they're just really beating at home. They're kind of treating the audience maybe like they're a little stupid. Like, they're, they're just hammering. I guess maybe this is for kids, but it, it doesn't really feel like it. It's kind of dark. No, there's way too. There are way too many dead people. If you think this show is for kids, I suggest you watch through episode six. Okay. And then tell me this show is for kids. Yeah. I was trying <laughs> this, to. This show has this show has caused nightmares, and if you don't cry, you're dead inside. Yeah. It just it it felt like they're treating you like children the way that they're just beating you over the head with it, but. Yeah, and they also explain they explain the law of equivalent exchange like every single episode. Yeah, and yeah. then uh, when someone's having a hard time, an alchemist tells them, "Look, this is like equivalent exchange. We're alchemists." <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I'll tell you this next week as well. Fair enough. This is your daily reminder that equivalent exchange is required. Yeah. And they they do the classic thing where on the outro to a commercial break and the intro to a commercial break, there's a still yep. full metal alchemist. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. But those are the only th- complaints I have is just it's very you know, early to mid 2009s anime, but that's it. It is, so, it is so good though. Like, we were supposed to watch the first two episodes for the review, mm-hmm. but I have been watching this show uh, ever since we last recorded because I watched <laughs> two episodes of it and I was like, I got to watch some more. Hell yeah. The only reason I stopped. So I watched both episodes uh, while I was on the treadmill at the gym. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the only reason I stopped. I'm like, okay, got my uh, cardio in. So, yeah, it's fair. um, <laughs> it's definitely I have, a, I have a few notes on the first episode. I like uh, just some anime logic of um, the brothers capture um, Mr. Freeze. I mean, the ice alchemist mm-hmm. and like he, he's the guy gets pinned, gets pinned to a wall through alchemy. The other police show up they have him handcuffed and they're leading him away and like he freezes some people this this show straight up murders like 20 red shirts in the first 10 minutes <laughs> and then um the guy's boss like oh it looks like you underestimated your opponent i'm like did he though because it looks like the alchemy police fucked it up after he left the scene <laughs> yeah what's he supposed to do cut his hands off which i mean yes they should be cutting people's people's hands off there's all these psychopaths running around with with magic tattoos on their hands and no one cuts their hands off. Yeah. You know, what it reminds me of is uh one piece that ax more, that ax hand guy. And like, they got him handcuffed, but he still has a giant ax hand. <laughs> I got to look that up. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. You don't remember ax hand from uh one piece. He's just like a nine foot tall muscle bound guy with a ax instead of a hand. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Yep. And then he's in the the custody of the um the military navy or whatever and he's like he just cuts someone in half. It's like, "Oh yeah, he still has a giant axe for hand." <laughs> <laughs> so you think someone would have taken that off? Yep. We also I also I'd forgotten that the head honcho of the um military that the brothers joined. He's called the Fuhrer. Um yep. no way that can go poorly. <laughs> that's how you know he's he, that's how you know he's a good guy. Yes. <laughs> He's the King Fuhrer. That's how you know he's in charge. <laughs> yeah, I have a note that the villain of the first episode eventually escaped to create Iceland. Um, it's now green because he died. <laughs> yep. So Let's see, um, they talk about the unforgivable sin of the kids and um, transmutation yeah, and the episode. Yeah. Yeah, the episode, uh, the last note I have is that a half naked man is in a 15 year old's room flexing. What can go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> so this series, and I think to its benefit, does the exact reverse of what Mashal did. So we just uh, check out our Mashal video. Uh, what Mashal did was the first episode was complete setup. And then the second episode was like story and action or whatnot. We get more into it. They kind of build up to it. But this one gives you action out the gate. Now, episode two, we're going to get some backstory. Why is his arm metal? Who's this gigantic knight dude with a tiny child voice? So that that's pretty much how at least the first two episodes go. Do they do they keep that rhythm throughout the series or is it kind of just it kind of just goes along as. Because the the show picks up speed uh, pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I mean. Like, like at the end of episode one, you see that Uncle Fester looking dude. Mm-hmm. Um, he is like, he. I mean, he he goes pretty deep in the series as a as a major as a major enemy. Yeah. And um, yeah, I I think it does keep on like that. I guess to answer your question. Oh, okay. Yeah, because when we were doing My Hair Academia quite a bit, it would do. One episode, which would kind of set up the second episode. That's kind of how we got into this two episode flow of of it. So, but anyways, uh, you want to move on to episode two, and then 
Yeah. 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 We learned that the two boys were self-taught alchemy, um, which it's pretty wild. Like, you can just read a book and now you've got weapons of mass destruction level <laughs> magic that you can do with chalk. <laughs> Yeah, so they have a single parent household. The dad disappeared. Apparently he was an alchemist because the mother asks asks them, did your dad teach you this? No, we we figured it out ourselves with all these books. So yeah, we just opened the we learned to read and then we learned how to summon a nine foot fucking eyeball. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing. So the mother dies there. There's some sort of plague. I don't know if it's COVID or not, but it's probably polio at this point in time. But we get a timeline, so mom dies in 1904. So we kind of have a rough estimate of where or when this takes place. So how old are they when the mom dies? Like 10? Something like that? I think they were 10 and 11. Yeah, and now they're 16, 17, something like that? No. um, not. I'm, I was watching the show and not long ago, Alphonse said he was 14. Okay, 14, 15. Damn, they... Anime characters get a lot done by the time they hit 18. I feel like nothing. I mean, yeah, I mean, everyone's <laughs> washed up by the time they like need to shave. Yeah. <laughs> what is this, the 1900s or something? Oh, yeah, it is. Actually, yes. <laughs> Funny you should ask. So You didn't notice by the completely functional human hands? <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't the, be... the robot arms and legs? Right, I wouldn't be too upset about losing my arm if I just got a robotic one that worked perfectly normally after. (laughs) (laughs) So, the mom dies, and they're going to do human transmutation to bring her back. Yeah, the the books don't really make sense. Like, say, oh, this is a sin, don't do it. I'm like, don't call it a sin. Like, everyone sins. They need to warn them that it's going to steal your arms and legs and summon a giant eyeball. Yeah. That'd be a mu- that would be, these people suck at warning labels. <laughs> that, that'd be like if you had like radioactive water and so they, someone, you put up a thing saying, warning, this water is protected by Jesus. Like if you're real thirsty, you're going to drink it anyway. Yeah. If you said, warning, this is going to murder your face off, people <laughs> will be less likely to drink it. Yeah, warning, worse than bleach. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, go back to that cactus you ignored. It's yeah. much better than this water. <laughs> you know the the, like they, they sh- the 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 books should say don't do it because of sin. They should say this is going to summon a nine foot demon eye, <laughs> and then the outline of an asshole is going to steal your body. Yeah. Do you know the figure of speech? It'll cost you an arm and a leg. <laughs> 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 They took that completely literally here. So summoning that could completely turns his brother into this. Well, he he gets sucked into a magic realm of whatever the fuck. He brings the mother back, loses his arm and leg, and she's like a hell, a blood spewing hell monster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as you do. Yeah, because they I guess they didn't think about it. Just like, oh, we're going to we're going to bring mom back. and She's going to be right back to making us cookies or whatever. But no, she's. Yeah, yeah. The, she, um, I, I will tell you that the the creature they talk to, mm-hmm. he's named Truth, <laughs> but he's kind of a liar because he says this is what you wanted, isn't it? No, he didn't want to be. No, he did not want to be grabbed by nine hundred sticky hands, <laughs> licorice sticky hands, and then have his limbs dissolved. It's not. Yeah. That's not what he signed up for. That's why you sent me those things. <laughs> you yep, sent me a picture of those hands. Those things I remember that. would get covered in hair and just nasty. Just just gross. But so that's pretty much all I have for the first or for the second episode, if you wanna take it away. Yeah, we, yeah, we do see the um we do see the start of the test where the fifteen year old becomes a state alchemist. He does that by uh summoning a spear and all and almost threatening to kill the king. I don't know why they didn't shoot him. Like there were eight people with a gun to his head, and he had a spear. You would think someone would have shot him. Yep. Uh, yeah. So worst bodyguards ever. It's a good thing the king is like a level twelve super stand. Otherwise, he would have died because those guards are bullshit. <laughs> uh, 
And uh, uh, yeah, that's all I got. The uh, I mean, I mean, this is an intense episode. I feel like they bring this kind of stuff a little in a little too early. Like you don't really know the characters. Yeah. Episode two hits a lot harder on your second watch. How so? But like, you know, this is sort of the baseline for their story. And you're going to like see this. The show has a good bit of action in it, but it's mostly drama. Yeah. As you're kind of watching the the screaming and PS PSTD and desperation that comes out of uh, a really, really bad afternoon for these two kids. Right. So and yeah, that's all I got for episode two. So if, if you have any interest at all, I will tell you to stick through this at least until episode six. Oh yeah. I'm going to watch this. It, it's only like 60 episodes total. So yeah. I thought this was going to be one of those, not quite one piece, but like a bleach level where we have 400 episodes, but no, I'm going to watch this. Uh, so I have a couple little statistics here. So obviously you can see on the screen, 87% on TMDB, which seems kind of low for what the other two I'm about to read you. So Letterboxd has it as a 4.6 out of five mm-hmm. with th- thousands of ratings and crunchy roll. <laughs> Now, keep this in mind. Crunchyroll is providing you. These are all anime fans only rating this, but 32.9 thousand ratings for a 4.9 out of 5. But it's your target audience is all rating one of the best anime, you know, pe- of all time. Apparently, I can't quite say that yet, but we'll we'll get there. Yeah. I find TMDB scores to be a little bit lower than everything else. Mm hmm. Like almost every show, if you look at it, look at it on TMDB and IMDB, TMDB is going to be a little bit lower. Yeah. Because IMDB is full of shit, so. You know, we won't get into that right now. However, what we will get into, and it will be up on Friday, I'm going to commit to that. We are going to be recording our Mission Impossible 7 episode, and I'll put that up Friday around 5 o'clock. So, stick around for that, and we'll... Maybe if you guys like the live streams, I don't know. We'll do some more anime. It's, it's it's pretty fun to talk about this stuff. So, but until Friday, we will catch you guys later. Thank you for coming to the live stream, all four of you, of which two of two of you is us, <laughs> and the other two, I'm guessing bots. I don't know. Maybe. Hopefully, there will be eight of us next time. More bots, please. Nice.